So in this lecture, we are going to see some examples of on constraint optimization. Equality constraint optimization and inequality constraint optimization. First, on constraint. Our goal is to minimize x1 s square, x2 s square x3 s square, x4 s square. And our variables are x1, x2, x3, and x4. So the solution, we define our function f of x, and x is the vector of variables x1, x2, x3, x4, transform. f is x1 s square plus x2 s square plus x3 s square plus x4 s square. And then we find gradient of f with respect to x, it should be zero. So gradient of f is derivative of f with respect to x1, with respect to x2, with respect to x3, and with respect to x4, which is 2x1, 2x2, 2x3, and 2x4. So this should be all equal to 0. This leads to our vector of variables to be 0 at the optimal point. So the answer for this scenario is x1 is equal to x2 x3, x4 equal to zero. Now let's take a look at the example with equality constraint. So equality constraint optimization. Our objective remains the same. So we use the same objective function We add a constraint here. So subject to x1, x2, x3, x4. Subject to, we add the constraint x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 is equal to one. All right. So here, what we have to do first, uh, we have to write our equality constraint in terms of g of x is equal to zero. So this is equal to one minus x1 minus x2 minus x3 minus x4 is equal to zero. This is our g of x. And then we have to assign a Lagrange multiplier to this constraint. We call our Lagrange multiplier lambda. Given all this solution, what we are going to do first, we formulate the Lagrange function. Lagrange function is f of x plus lambda g of x. In our case, it's x1 s square, x2 s square, x3 s square, x4 s square plus lambda multiplied by 1 minus x1 minus x2 minus x3 minus x4. The next step. What we have to do, we have to write the KKT conditions. Gradient of L with respect to X is equal to zero. So we have two X1 minus Lambda equal to zero. This is derivative with respect to X1. With respect to X2, with respect to x3, derivative of the Lagrange function, and with respect to x4. So each of these give us 
x. So x1 is equal to lambda over 2, x2 lambda over 2, x3 lambda over 2, and x4 lambda over 2. Another uh, KKT condition is derivative of L with respect to Lagrange multipliers. Here, we only have one Lagrange multiplier, which is lambda. So this should be also zero. And this gives us the equality constraint. So one minus x1 minus x2 minus x3 minus x4 is equal to zero. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to insert the value of each of these based on lambda inside uh, this constraint. So all this together, so this is lambda over two, lambda over two, lambda over two, lambda. All right. It's going to be four multiplied by lambda divided by two. One minus four multiplied by lambda divided by two is zero. One minus two lambda is zero. Then lambda is one divided by two. So when we have the value of lambda, we can find the value of x1. In this case, again, they are equal. And they are lambda divided by two, or one divided by two. So these are the optimal values of our variable, which leads to the minimum point for our objective function, given this equality constraint. Now let's go one step forward. What's the next step? We want to add an equal inequality constraint to the same problem. So we have minimizing x1 square, x2 square, x sub 3 square, x sub 4 square. Our variables x1, x2, x3, and x4 subject to the equality constraint that we had before. 1 minus x1 minus x2 minus x3 minus x4 is 0. And we add a new constraint, x4 less than or equal to 2. All right. So uh, first, what I'm going to do, I'm going to write this in the standard format, x4 minus 2 less than or equal to 0. So now we have g of x or equality, and we have each of x. The Lagrange multiplier. for equality constraint, lambda, Lagrange multiplier for inequality constraint, mu. Let's start with the Lagrange function. For the Lagrange function, we have our objective function plus lambda multiplied by g of x plus, actually this should be transpose, but in this case, because lambda and mu are scalars, so transpose doesn't make any change. If you recall from the linear algebra, for scalars like a, a transpose is equal to a. This is a one by one matrix. Right, which is x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square plus x4 square plus lambda multiplied by 1 minus x1, x2, x3, x4 plus mu multiplied by x4 minus 2. So now that we have the Lagrange function, we have to write the KKT condition. For the KKT conditions, we start with the derivatives with respect to x1. So for x1 is 2x1 minus lambda is equal to 0, which means x1 is lambda divided by 2. For x2, 2x2 
when is lambda equal to zero? So x2 is lambda divided by zero. x3, 2x3 minus lambda equal to zero, which means x3 is lambda divided by two. But for x4, what we have, we have two x4. These are the terms that have x4. 2x4 minus lambda plus mu is equal to zero, which means x4 is lambda minus mu divided by two. So this is what we have so far. The next thing is our equality constraint, which is x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 is equal to one. If we do this, we are going to have four multiplied by lambda divided by two minus mu divided by two equal to one or two lambda minus mu divided by two is equal to one. So this is this, uh, the other equation that we have. Also, what we can do from this, uh, we can represent lambda in terms of mu. So lambda is going to be equal to two plus mu divided by four. Or uh, before uh, writing the rest of KKT conditions, uh, which are about the inequality constraint, I'm going to represent all of our variables in terms of mu. So what does that mean? I'm going to use this value for lambda, replace it here, and determine what's the value of x1 to x4 in terms of mu. So let's show the KKT conditions by a star so we can keep track of them. These are the KKT conditions so far. So based on what we have so far, x1 is equal to, x2 is equal to, x3 is equal to lambda, divided by two, but we already know that the value of lambda in terms of mu is two plus mu divided by x. And x4 is equal to lambda divided by two minus mu divided by two. So x4, is equal to one divided by four minus three mu by two. All right, I'm going to rewrite this in the next page so it can follow up. All right, so we have x1 is equal to x2 equal to x3 equal to one over four plus mu divided by eight and x4 is equal to 1 divided by 4 minus 3 mu divided by 8. All right, now uh, we go to the next KKT conditions, the next two KKT conditions. One of them is derivative of Lagrange function with respect to mu should be less than or equal to zero. In our case is x4 minus two should be less than or equal to zero. The other KKT condition is diagonal mu multiplied by inequality constraint function should be zero. In our case, we have only one mu and this is our edge of X. So mu multiplied by X four minus two should be equal to zero. All right, so now we have two scenarios. Either mu is zero or x4 minus two is equal to zero. Let's explore each of this scenario, keeping in mind that we have another KKT condition that tells us mu is greater than or equal to zero. So we have scenario one, scenario two. I'm going to first uh, evaluate uh, scenario two. So if scenario two holds, 
x4 minus 2 is equal to 0, which means x4 is equal to 2. And if that happens, I'm going to use this equation here. Two is equal to one divided by four minus three mu divided by eight. Let's try to find mu based on this equation. I'm going to move this to this side and move two to this side. We have three mu divided by eight is equal to one divided by four minus two. Three mu by eight is equal to one over minus eight over four, which is minus seven divided by four. So the value of mu equal to minus 14 divided by three. But this is a contradiction. Contradiction with what? With the constraint that mu should be positive. This is negative. So scenario two is not the case. What does it tell us? It tells us that our constraint is non-binding. And scenario one holds, which means mu is equal to zero. If mu is equal to zero, I'm going back to our original, uh, original answer based on values of mu. This leads to x1 is equal to x2 equal to x3, one divided by four, and x4 plus zero by eight, which is one over four. x4 is one over four minus three multiplied by zero over eight or one over four. So in our case, it is a non-binding inequality constraint. All right, let me go back one more time to the previous uh, lecture. All right, so here we have the Lagrange function. Based on the Lagrange function, we have to write all of the KKT uh, conditions. We have the derivative with respect to x1, x2, x3, x4. We have the derivative with respect to lambda. We have derivative with respect to mu or the inequality constraint. We have this constraint, we have this diagonal uh, matrix with mu's at the diagonal elements multiplied by h of x is equal to zero. In our case, we only have one mu, so mu is a scalar, which is mu multiplied by the inequality constraints objective function is equal to zero. Sorry, the inequality constraints function is equal to zero. Now we have two scenarios. Either it's non-binding or mu is equal to zero or it's binding. We check the case where we assume it's a binding constraint or the inequality constraint is equal to zero. In this case, x4, x of four is equal to two. But if we assume that given our previous calculations, mu turns out to be a negative number. But this is against one of our KKT conditions which tells us the Lagrange multiplier for inequality constraint should be greater than or equal to zero. So mu is zero this holds and we have a non-binding inequality constraint. Based on this, we could find the optimal values for all of the variables. These three examples are based on a lecture called KKT examples by Stanley B. Gershwin from MIT.